why he's going to pour a libation to you. Is this for Papa? Oh, oh thank you. Um, he has, he brought something. Okay. Okay, yes. Okay. And you know, Okay, so we're going to um, go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to turn the mic over to um, Reverend Theophilus Rivers, who has just been amazing um, through this process and opening up the church, you know, after years of, of people being afraid and fear and all of this and saying, let this um, happen. And when we slowed down, he made sure we kept moving. So could we please warm it up for him? Amen. Glad to see so many people out for this historical occasion for the church as well as the community. Uh, you know, there was an old saying that if you don't learn your history, you're doomed to repeat it again. And so while some people may, a lot of people may be for this occasion, there were a lot against it. But we must go on. History must be told. Amen. You, Amen. We're going to start off with our drum call by Elder Ayoka and Papa. Yes. Yes. Greetings. It's libation time. Alafia. That means peace and good blessings to each and every one. We are just grateful to be here to be a part of this great ceremony. Now it's libation time, and Nisowala will be the one to pour the libation for us. Okay. And as you pour, your words will come to pass. When I say I go, please all of you respond, Amen. I go. Amen. I go. Amen. I go. Amen. Now you see, I'm wearing uh, half footwear on. Now where I am standing now, it is the holiest and the strongest ground so far on earth. As far as we, the blacks, are concerned, and all those here are concerned. Why? Because it is a sacred ground. I am before the highest of all highest, the lone one who no one knows his, her beginning and end. And therefore, I have to remove my shoes. This is African culture. Amen. I have already removed uh, my, my, my little hat, showing that I'm come to talk to the oldest lady on earth and come to talk to the oldest man on earth. Because to us Africans, 
God is male and female. In Africa, we call God Vino Vito in heaven, which means father for all children and mother of all children. And the God says, Ata na nyongo, meaning God the king, God the queen, or God the mother, or God the father. God is one yet in two. And therefore we come in before him and before her now to call on our ancestors. And in English, this is why they call it the first grand ancestor. Of course, when we say ancestor, we do not mean dry bones in the cemetery. We are meaning a sacred and holy spirit of those who are gone on. That what we mean. And they say soil to soil, ashes to ashes, earth to earth. And uh, what spirit to spirit or what? That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. <laughs> now, now what we do in Africa is we worship the almighty creator. When I pour the, uh, uh, the, the drink, um, for him, her, I'm worshiping. But when I make mention of any angel or any archangel or our ancestors, we are venerating them. Is it not written that honor thy mother and thy father? That thy days may be what? No. On earth. That's what we are doing. When we, we say mother and father, the moon is mother. The sun is father. Mother earth. That's what you're going to say. I remove my shoes too because that is mother earth. We have to go on now. Yeah. In the east you are there, yeah. in the west you are there, yeah. in the north you are there, yeah. in the south you are there. Yeah. Yeah. You are the hub around which everything revolves. When you are not, nothing was on this earth. When you came before, everything came. Now here's how oh, Afrani, our drink, with good smell. He says, sacrifice this unto me, for me it, it, it what? Gives me a good smell. And therefore we pour this, to show that you are the almighty creator. I am humble before you, wearing nothing. Now, as I pour this very drink, now we know you've invited all your angels and archangels to come and partake it. And our ancestors. Hey, but you are real bike no no. Yeah. Ah, track of bike on no no. Yeah. Now, colo bike on no no. Ah, coach out to go bike on no. Hey, me saying bike on no no. Bonga bike on no no. Ah, colo no bike on no no. Ni me kaname feni yo me. All our ancestors who we have not mentioned their names. Now they are the ones we are mentioning today. Yeah. Now, the theater bless each and every one of them. Yeah. Now, to that. They may think about us and we connect with them. Yeah. Let the heavens bless us. Yeah. Let the earth bless us. Yeah. Let the wind bless us. Yeah. Because all came from you. When we pour on the earth, we know you are the mother of everything. And out of water, everything came. Yeah. Bless the water yeah. itself. Yeah. 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 And do I, have I forgotten? Your name is even water. Now, what we call in the West, water is what? Uru, the great word. That is an ancient Egyptian word. And it is the name of the almighty creator. You did everything. Now, now we are here. Now, today, it is not an ordinary day. It is a day. It is a day, a day, that I am crying. A very serious day for the African Americans and those who were enslaved and brought from Africa down to this place. Now, that's what we're going to be talking about. All of you come and partake. Hey, Big Six, now I'm coming to talk to you. All the chiefs, all the kings in Africa, see, Po. Po means. Oh. Which means when somebody is hurt and want to say uh, sorry. What? sorry. Now all the queens in Africa are saying po. Oh. 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 Now all the children are saying po. Oh. Oh. 
All the male boys are saying who? Oh. All the pregnant women are saying who? Oh. All husbands are saying who? Oh. But uh, Almighty Creator, this is what I'm going to talk to you now. I'm crying. <laughs> and the lady which we were told that was pregnant, that was shut. Oh, baby, may you rest in peace. But never rest in peace. Take on your armor and come back. When you drink, leave whoever killed you. Leave some water for him. When you eat, whoever killed you, leave some for him. Now, now, oh, mama, who you were killed? Pregnant? How that be? If it is untrue that because of pig that you were killed or hog that you were killed, now then, if it was because of that, then you are wrong. But if it is not because of that, let the east speak. Yeah. Let the west speak. Yeah. Let the north speak. Yeah. Let the south speak. Yeah. Central heart around you, who all things revolves. Act now. Yeah. All the seven days act. Monday act, yeah. Tuesday act, yeah. Wednesday act, yeah. Thursday act, yeah. Friday act, yeah. Saturday act, yeah. Sunday act. Yeah. The seven days of the week, which are the seven principal parts of you. These are all your characteristics. Now, let them all work and let's see the truth, whether it is true or not. Yeah. Truth never dies, just like lies never dies. And this place, and the place that we are going to unveil, shall ever be a sign for mankind to do what is right yeah. and not use mind. We need not talk too much, but we know what need be done, you've done it. Yeah. What need be said, we've said it. What you've left, the theater, you've added unto it. Yeah. What we've added, and it is not your time. Every yeah. archangel, take it away. Yeah. Female archangel, take it away. Yeah. Male archangel, take it away. Yeah. Oh, all you there looking at me, take it away. Yeah. But if it is true, okay. let each seven cardinal direction take the right action. And with this action, no human hand can prevail. Cha, 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 oh my Yeah. All right, we thank you for that presentation. Now we ask if you will, if everybody will stand. And we're going to sing, lift every voice and sing. The lyrics are on the back of your paper, please. Fast. <laughs> Still Lift every voice and sing to the Yes, with us. 
Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We will now have our official welcome from Mr. Warren Lee, the grandson of Miss Eunice Miles. And following that, we'll have a prayer by Reverend Kenneth Hunt. And the purpose by Reverend Willie Mayberry. In that order, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First, I want to thank everybody for here, being here today. This is a great monumental day, a great day for, for this occasion. Um, it's also my mother's birthday. So, <laughs> where's Mayor Malo at? Wave your hand. He celebrated my grandmother's 100th with me, so he celebrated my mother's 80th with me. So, so my job is to welcome you today, so good afternoon, all. I want to welcome you to this dedication of this historical marker. This marker, marker represents the pain and struggles of many of the descendants today have faced. My name is Warren Lee, Sr. I am the grandson of Minister Eunice Myers, who affectionately turned 100 just a couple weeks ago. So there's a story behind the story. Jim Dennis was married to my great grandmother, Julia Dennis, which I would assume my great uncle would be Bert and my great aunt would be Mary Dennis. Um, my grandmother, Miss Myers, has, um, endured the aftermath of this hard pain and is living with it for over a hundred years now. Today is the historical marker that states that there was an event that happened not too long ago. Although this marker will tell a story, the story will only be a partial story. The history books will never tell us the true untold story. It will never tell us the story of our loved ones, what happened, how it happened, and why it happened. History will never tell us that Boise Long, Jim Dennis, Bert Dennis, Andrew McHenry, and Pastor Josh Baskin were great fathers, were great husbands, were great family men. History won't tell us that, but I want to tell you that they were. History would never tell us that Mary Dennis and Stella Young were great wives. They were somebody's daughters. They were somebody's mothers. History won't tell us of the savageness of the mob that cut the baby out of her stomach. Everybody who's a mother know how savage that is. But history won't tell us how she felt that night. It would never illustrate it, nor can we feel it. Certainly, as a male, we would never feel that feeling. So I stand to you to tell you that history won't tell even today that we are expected to forget what happened. But if you are a descendant of either one of those, you can't forget. Even if you're not a descendant, even if you are a person who was a relative on the other side, you shall not forget. Mm. History won't tell you to forget. But how can we forget when the state of Florida has made Dudley Farms a historical place? Mm. It will never echo the sounds of that fateful night. Mm. History won't tell you that. Dudley Farms won't tell you that. It won't even tell you the true history of how it, the events led up to that. It never will. So I ask of you, why? Why is this? Why is it that history won't tell us that? I don't have an answer yet, but I will soon. And why don't history tell us, even at Newberry High School, why it doesn't talk about it. I graduated from Newberry High School. We never had a black history class. They never told us of the Newberry Six, and it happened way before I graduated. So why is it that that hasn't happened? 
Is it because our state legislators don't want it to happen? Our state congressmen, representatives? Why is it on both sides? That's another question that we need to answer to. And finally, my last question is, why is it that history had the tree removed on that faithful day? Why is it that we can't drive past there and get the eerie feeling of when our loved ones swung back and forth? The media won't tell you that. CNN, MSNBC, CBS, none of them. They won't tell you why that tree has been removed. But if you're a descendant, I want to know why. That's a historical marker. As a matter of fact, that marker, this marker should be there, in my opinion. This marker that stands here should be there. Now, I appreciate all the effort, all the work that has been put in to making this happen. But truth be told, this marker should be there because that is where it happened. That is where everything happened. So I welcome you today. Hopefully your minds and hearts are clear. Hopefully I won't ever say that we're gonna put it in the past because as a true Christian person, I've forgiven, but folks, I can't forget. I can't forget because that was a relative of mine. Unos dos tres. That was three relatives of mine. And the other three that was involved. So again, I welcome you today. Thank you all for coming out. And I'm going to turn this over into the hands of the person that needs to be up here next. Minister Kenneth Hunt. Amen. If you'll bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, thanking you, Lord, for allowing us to assemble ourselves here today in unity, in peace, and in oneness, God. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done. We thank you for the many people that came out today. We pray that you would touch every heart, touch every mind, and let your love spread abroad. But Father God, you, you taught us that we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And we want to thank you today for the love that has been shown here today. We pray that you would have grace, that your grace and your mercy, Lord, will fall upon us as we stand before you today. We pray for this country. We pray for this land. We pray for this community. We pray for the healing of this community. We pray that you would just bless every heart that is bleeding and troubled right now, Lord. We pray that, Father God, you will mend the brokenhearted. Yes, Lord. We thank you today, God. We thank you for your presence, and we thank you for your peace. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God is a good God. And you ought to have sense enough to know. This wouldn't have happened if folks had sense enough to know that God is a good God. The children of Israel had been in slavery in Egypt a little over 400 years. And Yahweh, God, sent Moses to bring his children out of Egypt after going through all of the suffering and pain that they had encountered. Moses died, Joshua was asked to lead the children into the promised land. As they were crossing 
the moving waters of Jordan. God told them to do something that seemed unintelligent to them, and that was to just pick up some stones and set them, pile them up on top of each other. And somebody in the crowds start complaining and the word went out. And they all sang this song. What meaneth these stones? And then God said, I want you all to have this mark of this stone placed in this area. So as years go by, that the children will pass by who will not know of the struggles of being in Egypt. And they ask, what meaneth these stones? And you will tell them how I bought them out of the land of Egypt after they had suffered. Now the thing about that is, if you don't teach the children, history has a way of repeating itself. Mm. Yes. It's sad to say we have to name buildings and put up stone markers for people to remember. But if you don't teach it, they'll forget it. Mm. Mm. My great, great, my great great-grandmother Peggy Camps lived during this era. She remembered that, Peggy Camps. And I would sit at her knees and she would tell me about what happened. Two of these guys were relatives of mine, Baskin and McHenry. And my great-grandmother would tell me the story but the, the thing is that I want you to remember, if you don't teach it to your children, history will repeat itself. We did, little did many people know. They were afraid to utter, they were afraid to talk. And even our generation are afraid to talk about what happened in 1916. And may we come today bold and stand forward and say, time is out. We must come and tell the story. Because if we don't tell the story, history will repeat itself. But the sad thing about it is, my great grandmother said, and our purpose is coming here to remind of what happened in 1916. My grandmother said, that one of, one of our own mm -hmm. were involved mm -hmm. in this matter mm -hmm. and that they were going to let them go after the preacher asked God to lighten up the trees and the trees lit it up like lightning and one of us was there at the lynching and they said, the white folks said, well, we need to let these <coughs> colored people go. And one of us said that day, no, if you let them go, they'll go back and tell that I was involved with this matter. If you don't share it, they'll repeat it. History will repeat itself. Now, I went to school at Newberry Elementary, the all-black school. Went from first grade to eighth grade. And the soul, our school was next to Lynch Hammond. And the souls of those people that were Lynch, when we would have plays at night at there, we would gather there, and some of the students are here, and they can witness to the fact. Now, some of you may say well, it sounds crazy, but it's a reality. The souls. We could tell you of things that happened near the school out in Lynch Hamlet that would make your hair stand on your head. But I'm glad today that, that those souls had come at peace and at rest. If we don't tell the story, 
history repeat itself. Now I reckon, I don't know, but I suppose you can get 50 markers if you want to, if you want to pay for it. <laughs> so if we want a marker at, in Lynch Hammond, we can get it there, amen. amen. And if you want one at your house to remember, you can get it there. <laughs> we must tell our story. Our purpose is to come. And those of us who are, who are descendants of those who suffered, open your mouth and tell your children and your children's children of that awful day. Amen. Just like we tell the story of Calvary, tell the story that happened in Lynch Hammer. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, tell the story. Yeah, tell the story. I didn't know he got He just got Just before we bring Mayor Marlowe up, we want to ask that um, our other elected officials who are present, um, and we can't look out there and tell you know, exactly who was able to make it. I know Gail Johnson had to go out of town. There were some people who said they couldn't be here, but if you are here, could you stand um, now and just introduce your, yourself who are here as we move into this next um, section. Let's, okay, here. Tina Sarton, Alachua County School Board. Thank you. Mary Helen Wheeler, Alachua County Commission. Leonetta McNeely, Alachua County School Board. Robert Hutchinson, County Commission. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> well, we'll hear from these two in just a moment, but I think it's important because at that time, some, some elected officials were involved in the, <laughs> um, in the lynching, and so it's significant that today we have people who are participating in remembering um, you know, those, those souls in a positive way. So. Good afternoon, and welcome. It's a, a beautiful and glorious day that we have gathered here in witness of. I'm the mayor of the city of Newberry, and I, I really can't express adequately how honored I am to be here today. I feel so small to be a part of such an important moment in our history, part of a moment in our time. And every single person here today, I would like to ask you a favor. I would like you to pause and let this moment truly sink in. Think about what is about to happen here. Think about what we will all soon stand in witness of. Think about what it means and think about how far we have come. And consider that you, you are and will forever in the pages of history now be part of part of this moment. The weight of this moment and the realization that I, like you, get to be a part of it, it fills me with pride. It fills me with pride in our community that we've got here. It took a long time, but we're here now. And there are moments like these, there are moments, if we stop and listen we can hear the footsteps of God. And then we know we are engaged in the work of the righteous. This moment has been made possible by the work of others. And I am so grateful to them. They're all around me. I'm grateful for their commitment to the truth. I'm grateful their, uh, for their commitment to ensuring that our children, my children, will not grow up in a world that is too frightened to speak the truth, too frightened to face 
the truth. And one day, one day, not too frightened to apologize for that truth. And that day, that day is this day. For as Martin Luther King Jr. said, the time is always right to do what is right. And the truth is, I am sorry. We are here to recognize that six people were murdered. Were murdered without trial. Were murdered without justice. Were murdered without compassion. And I am sorry that we as a society failed them. And they deserve, their memory deserves, their descendants deserve an apology. And so I stand before you today as God is my witness to say that I am sorry. And I would like to offer the following proclamation that will hang in this church. It reads, City of Newberry Proclamation, the time is always right to do what is right by Dr. Martin Luther King. Whereas on August 18, 1916, six innocent people, Jim Dennis, Bert Dennis, Mary Dennis, Stella Young, Andrew McHenry, and Reverend Josh J. Baskins were murdered. And whereas on October 27, 1916, Boise Long, after being found guilty by an all-white jury, who took a total of seven minutes to deliberate his case, was executed. And whereas the city of Newberry acknowledges that nowhere in the course of these events was justice to be found. And whereas the city of Newberry acknowledges that a sacred duty of any society, a sacred duty of any community, is to protect the innocent. And this dark moment represents a failure of society and a failure of community. And whereas the city of Newberry acknowledges the truth that lynching was a common practice, that lynching was immoral, that lynching was used to terrorize African Americans, not just here in our community, but across our nation. And whereas the city of Newberry recognizes value in recalling, that, recalling the role that our community played in the history of racial injustice, and in taking steps towards reconciliation. And whereas the city of Newberry citizens have participated with city and county officials in an effort to bring attention to the events in Newberry's past, which must be understood as an essential step towards genuine and sincere reconciliation. And whereas the city of Newberry recognizes that this historical marker will and should serve both as a reminder of the sins of the past and as a symbol of the desire to move forward together in openness, honesty, fairness, and unity, but most importantly, in truth. Now, therefore, be it resolved that by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Newberry, I do hereby proclaim the events of August 18th, 1916, commonly known as the Newberry Six, as the darkest moment in our community's past. Further, I do hereby proclaim the actions taken that day as a failure of our community to do unto others as they would have done unto them. May this marker shine a light on the sins, on our sins, so that we may repent of them. And may the sincerity of our regret serve as a reminder to never again descend into the darkness of bigotry and hate. It witness whereof I have heretofore set my hand and caused the great seal of the city of Newberry, Florida to be affixed in Newberry, Florida this 27th day of April in the year 2019. Reverend. John Hill Theater and all the families that were involved in the legend, we accept this. Thank you. Okay, we now 
have the importance of the market by Commissioner Charles Chuck Chestnut. Good afternoon. afternoon. Thank you, Reverend Rivers. Uh, first, before I start, I'd like to recognize Commissioner, Commissioner Hutchison and Commissioner Wheeler that is here today. Uh, so it's three of us out of the five that are here today. Um, history is very important. Um, you know, we, we always say, uh, if you don't know your history, you will repeat it. But I think that there are people in our community who knows the history, but refuse to tell it. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem mm -hmm. for future generations. It is indeed an honor uh, to bring some remarks about the importance of the re remembering the victims of racial terror in Alachua County. The America Black Holocaust Museum puts it this way, a memorial to the victims of lynching. Each of these victims who once, once alive human beings with feelings, hopes, and dreams, but the drama of their death have overshadowed their lives. We must remember that each had talents and pleasures singing, dancing, telling stories, playing cards or sports, creating beautiful and useful things. Each worked for a living or struggled for unemployment. Each was a part of a family and a community, a father, a mother, a husband, or wife, son, or daughter, friend, or neighbor, loved ones who retrieved the mutilated bodies and grieved over it. This was a painful time in terms of what happened in Alachua County in 1916. Of course, during that time was the Jim Crow laws and racial violence against blacks in America. Lynching was used to terrorize and control black people. It is still painful today because some of the citizens do not want to talk about or discuss what happened in 1916. Some talk about lynch hammock where some of the lynchings probably took place some citizens are still fearful uh, of what might happen to them if they talk about the lynchings. We had a meeting in Newberry, and the Mayor Marlow was there. A group of citizens were at the Martin Luther King Center, and we tried to start that dialogue of talking about the past but some of the descendants and some of the people in the community who knew the story would not say a word. I don't know if it was because the Gainesville son was there, but they did not entertain the discussion. Some talked about some of the Jim Crow laws, some of the things that happened during that period of time, but no one really wanted to talk about what actually happened in 1916. Some of the victim families still lives in this community uh, today in Alachua County. The Dennis family, the Longs, the McHenry, uh, and then they have a lot of descendants also here. The Alachua County Historical Society or Commission reported between 1877 and 1956, there were 21 lynchings to find out that there are more than 21 in Alachua County, and that history is not been told. I think Dr. Nunn states it well. I quote, lynchings are a part of our local history. 
The Newberry lynching marker will give us an opportunity to acknowledge what happened and remember the innocent people who were killed by a mob that included distinguished citizens, law enforcement, a state representative, and regular people. Most importantly, it can help us to understand some relationships today. It is important to remember these victims in terms of the torment that they went through. This memorable, memorial of lynching is a reminder of what happened in 1916 in Alachua County. And today, we give honor to the lynchings victims in Alachua County. Today, the Newberry lynching marker will be the first historical marker to commemorate the lynching in Alachua County. And the Alachua County Commission has started a process called Truth and Reconciliation. Uh, with the help of Commissioner Hutchinson and other commissioners, uh, we're going to do our best to make sure that this story is told and that the other lynchings in Alachua County be told also and making sure that we have a historical marker in those areas where it occurred. And I, I just ask that during this process of truth and reconciliation, um, that we learn this history, tell this history to our children, make sure that this history is in our local school system to be taught. Um, there are a lot of questions, you've heard that today, that needs to be answered. And so Alachua County Commission is going to try to its best abilities to answer some of those questions. And may God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Drumming is going to be our, our song <laughs> for now. And I'm going to ask um, members of the um, family, uh, descendants of the families who are here to come forward now um, for the unveiling. Where is um, Sherry Dupree? Could you come? Come on, Uncle Ben, did the unveiling? members from the church. Some of them are working inside there. Okay, and then I'm going to ask, um, after I'm going to, which is done, I'm going to ask, um, you know, the commissioners and people to come forward. Okay, one, two, three. A marker by the way <laughs> and what um, um, Lee brother Lee said earlier about you can't fit at the whole story um, in there it's just impossible um, to do and there's new information that has come out about what happened with that lynching but we did the best that we could with what we have so if we could give it another I'm gonna ask um, Polly Blunt He's still here, if you could come forward.
I want to say um, we had a memorial in 2002, and at that memorial, Kali Blunt sang this song. Um, he did it again for the 100 year anniversary uh, 2016. And what a blessing that he's here to do it now. I'm a habit you can't break. <laughs> Southern trees bear a strange fruit, blood on the leaves and blood at the root, black bodies swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pastoral scenes of the gallant South, the bulging eyes and the twisted mouth, scent of magnolias, sweet and fresh. Then the sudden smell of burning flesh. Here is a fruit for the crows to pluck, for the rain to gather, for the wind to suck, for the sun to rot, for the tree to dry. Here is a strange and bitter crop. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Rivers. Okay. I think he's saying just go on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't he good? <laughs> yes. Wow. a few things because it's everything that needs to be shared has already been shared. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to um, sh mention just a few points that brought us to um, this point with dedicating the marker today um, because it's been a long, a long time um, coming, if, if you will. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out. First of all, um, there's so much going on today. Um, this is the first marker to commemorate lynchings in Alachua County, probably Marion County also, and you know, uh, most, most counties um, for that matter. The state of Florida had the highest per capita rate of lynchings in the country. Florida did. Alachua County ranked number two in the number of lynchings behind Marion County. Just think, you know, we're sitting here <laughs> and just because we can't count everything and you know, it'll be impossible to get all of those numbers. Um, in fact, even with the Newberry lynching, there were more than six um, um, people that were lynched with that that we know of, okay? Um, but you know, we have to start somewhere. But I want to say two months ago, I was actually on um, hospice because the um, doctors at Shands UF had given up on me. Fortunately, a friend of mine, Dr. Marie Kima, and some friends and family um, um, talked my husband into taking me to North Florida Regional Hospital. <laughs> um, and they courageously used their talents um, to give me treatment um, um, that Shands failed to do, to fail to provide. Um, and they didn't give up on me. That's what my point is. They did not give up. Yes. Um, so. If it wasn't for the fervent prayers of many people, many who are here, and the de dedication of those doctors, I, would, I wouldn't be here. So I give thanks um, today. And this is a lesson about faith.
a lesson about fortitude um, and not giving up. And this is um, the same lesson that we have when we talk about um, commemorating um, the lynchings, um, not giving up. There's so many efforts that have been underway to teach um, that history. And so, you know, the lesson comes in many shapes um, and forms. Um, so the birth of the idea for this particular marker goes back to 2001. I agree with Reverend Mayberry. You could put a marker anywhere. We could make a marker, right? Uh, our own marker, and you don't have to ask permission um, to do that. But this was 2001, and as I was conducting oral histories, people would always say, um, out of the clear blue side, the sky, they say, have you heard about the Newberry lynching? Have you heard about the Newberry lynching? And um, it just kept on coming. I was trying to run away from it, but it kept on coming back, I'd open up a book, and there, boom, on that page, it'd say something about the Newberry lynching. <laughs> um, and so I started to look into it, and it was at that time that we um, decided to hold the memorial, first memorial in 2002. Sherry was there, Kali, yeah. Um, yeah, the libation was done <laughs> um, at that one, and we did it at the site. Um, at that time. Um, and so it was a small group of us. Um, after hours of research, interviews, setbacks, and tears, <laughs> um, the Pleasant Plain Church stepped up um, about four years ago um, to hold a program, to plan, start planning to hold a program to commemorate the 100 year anniversary which we held um, in the church. And so their sisters, where's um, Ms. Mrs. Fields who took herself off the program. <laughs> oh, she's supposed to be on there, but anyway, I'm going to mention her in a minute. But we worked hard to do that. So this is 2019. People throughout the nation are starting to recognize lynchings, right? You all are hearing more about that. A lot of that has been inspired by the work of Brian Stevenson from the Equal Justice Initiative, um, EJI. Um, not only is he talking about um, lynchings, but he's talking about slave, that history before, and he's bringing it to the present and showing the connection um, to the criminal justice system and what's happening to people there, that um, the, the, the history of racial terrorism, he's addressing that. And so um, there are many communities around the country who are placing up historic markers and they will have a marker in Alabama at the Equal Justice Initiative Museum and then they will have a marker representing particular lynchings in the different cities at the different sites. So um, let's see, to get those monuments, counties have to collaborate and have these truth and reconciliation um, meetings and process and you have to be creative to come up with how you do it. Um, I caution here that if there is not truth though in the truth and reconciliation, <laughs> there can't be any uh, genuine reconciliation. You can't exclude the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth from that process. It's, otherwise, it's just business as usual. Um, and I believe um, this is where we are as a community as we start to have these talks about racial um, terrorism and any, the inequalities of the past and how they impact us today. Um, sometimes we have those discussions, but we ignore how it impacts um, the school system, the health system, transportation, housing, all of those issues have roots and things that happened before and there's so many people who really don't know what happened. And when we have those discussions about truth and reconciliation, you have to include everybody. Because there are discussions and then it's the same people who go in their little room <laughs> and, you know, of the so-called experts and they don't include everybody. So I think that's very important, okay? so. Research on the Newberry um, lynchings of 1916 reminds me of elements of our culture um, and the way that they function th today, the same way today as they did in 1916. Um, as I already mentioned, Alachua County, or maybe I didn't mention, it was the seventh largest slave owning county in Florida. There is a correlation between the counties in Florida that owned slaves and where the highest number of lynchings took place. 
place. So there's this relationships of those attitudes that came about because of what was reported in the newspapers and the little cartoons and people started to form certain types of attitudes about their um, neighbors. Okay, So what has happened, the descendants of the lynchers and the families of the lynching victims lived side by side for years. Um, they were well known citizens as um, Commissioner Chesma mentioned the law enforcement officers. We know the names of law enforcement officers who participated in the Newberry lynching. We know where they tied the nooses. Um, and some people who had access to that data, that information, excluded it from their official reports about um, the lynching. Okay, so no lynching we know was legal. And, you know, let's just say even if it was, we know that black people were lynched for things that they didn't do. And this is what we have to remember with this lynching. Often lynchings were used as a pretext to steal the property of black people. And that could be hogs, right? Um, or it could be actual land, okay? So in the case of the Newberry lynchings, the lie was told that people were stealing hogs. This was not a logical um, accusation, however, because most people out here, as Mr. Lee said, they had their own hogs. They had farms, they had horses, they had cows. The ones who have been able to hold on to their land still have some of those things even today. Can you imagine living out here and you have a school, you have stores, you have farmers and people thriving. I'm so happy you mentioned that. Um, families who were interrelated and you know doing what they did. So um, that was not a logical um, accusation. In the case of the Newberry lynchings, we have to ask why the constable went to the home of Boise Long at 2 a.m. We also have to research and ask the questions about real estate transactions that took place before and after the lynchings. Um, all of a sudden somebody dies and then certain people get their land. <laughs> Pleasant Plain was primarily a community of black families, as I've mentioned, some descendants of people who were enslaved here, others came during Reconstruction. Still others moved here to work in the phosphate mines. They were self-sufficient farmers who had businesses, mutual aid societies where they helped each other. The Female Protective Society, which you see, uh, they're still going strong today. The old this continuously running black women's organization um, in uh, definitely in Alachua County, uh, maybe North Florida. Okay, and many and the people and women in this church and three oops three other churches were the ones who were instrumental in making sure that um, that organization thrived. Okay. Just a couple more points. So a core issue today, because we can't deal with all of that, is related to land. Um, families are losing their land. So if they're farmers, they had land, they're losing their land in what I call modern day um, terrorism. <laughs> when you look at the land map, it's ironic that the church here um, um, that was attended um, by pe people, some people who were lynched, um, is sitting right next to property that is now owned by people, members of the church where the lynchers <laughs> went. They bought the property that buffers up against the cemetery, okay? How, how did that come about? Um, what is the issue with these black families and land? Um, you know, when, as we celebrate the dedication of the market, there are real estate agents, developers, lawyers, judges who've engaged in behaviors to take the land of blacks that s still live here, that they still own. Some people will research, they wait and see how, you know, who's getting up in age, and they'll go and make an offer to families behind the back of other family members, cultivate a relationship with them, offer a few little, <laughs> a few bucks, <laughs> and um, when they die, their family doesn't even know that they've signed their land away, okay? There are several stories um, that address um, this, that are connected to this, so. So in any case then, so like educational inequality, job discrimination, criminal justice abuse, um, 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 
modern terrorism, um, it's something that we need to address. So we dedicate this marker to remember those who were lynched on that fateful night in August 1916. Um, we also dedicate it to bring attention to what was once a thriving community. So we don't want to just focus on the negative. We always tell people that there were great things going on here, right, um, uh, Miss Liz? Because <laughs> Liz, you were right down in Archer when all this was going on, right? Um, let the marker be a symbol that we have not forgotten and that we will do all that we can to make sure that it does not happen again. Again, I thank you for coming today. I thank Mrs. Linda Fields. Where are you? Will you please come up here? Come, come here. Come here. She's the chair of the weekend of the anniversary activities for the church. And the church's participation in this has been vital. Um, you know, because if they didn't care, you know, then we just wouldn't even be thinking about doing it. Um, also, where's Peggy McDonald? She probably had to leave. We went longer than I thought. Yeah, where is she? Yeah, okay. When she was at the Matheson having programs dealing with that in Kwan De Ja, uh, with the Cultural Arts Coalition where they had, this is their 40th year, and some of us are going there um, later on. Um, you know, Sherry, I mentioned, Kali, the Solos, they were there at the beginning. Um, Zohara's support, um, Robin, somewhere around here, your support. We just appreciate you, you know, that hang in there, that research you're doing is important, has been um, just, um, has just strengthened us. Where's Melanie? Melanie Barr, <laughs> the Pleasant Street Historic Commission. So, uh, Reverend Rivers, where is he to? Okay, because people are, are scared. And I know that they're like, who's this lady coming up here talking about, you know, whatever. But he pushed this, he'd ask, you know, well, so where are we? Are we still doing that? So, you know, it's very important. I want to just thank Reverend Rivers and the um, Pleasant Plain Church family um, who had the courage, because it takes courage to do this, to move forward. Look at this cement I'm standing on. This just got laid, um, I don't know, because <laughs> they wouldn't tell me, but concrete professionals, Walter Donnelly and Daryl Thomas came out here. I, we're nervous because sometimes people will take signs down um, before the thing, so they, this wasn't even up at 1230, you know, <laughs> because people would steal, steal the signs. So, you know, just want to thank those people, Ms. Fields, the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program, they're videotaping this. Um, they have a project where they, doc hi Ryan, ra ra raise your hand, they document oral histories of African Americans in the county, and everybody, any and everybody, you name it, they document it. So thank you, My I want to thank Michael Hart from the state of, of Florida who helped us with the marker and then also those who have donated to make this happen. We passed the hat at one thing, then I got sick, <laughs> and um, we couldn't, so we're going to pass the hat again <laughs> today. If, if you're so inclined, we just need a little bit more to finish off, finish paying. Where's Reverend Mayberry? He says, you just have to pay for it. I was like, yeah, but, you know, that's not always that easy. <laughs> so um, in any case, just thank you all. Just You just don't know how important this is to a lot of people and we, we pray that the ancestors are proud and that um, our mighty creator is proud. Yes, so. yeah. Don't go far. I just want you all to please give Dr. Trisha Nunn a huge round of applause. I'm going to tell you this would not have been possible without her help, without her guidance and her determination. We just love you so much, and we just thank God. We thank God. Pleasant Plain family, where are you? Come on, loud and proud, Pleasant Plain. Come on. Amen. 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 So these are your flowers from us and in this beautiful little thank gift you. to you from you. all of us here at Pleasant Plain thank and we you. love you so much and to your mom thank oh, you so much yes. I, you I, have I, a I, wonderful daughter my we mom's thank. here with me raise your hand stand up mom, mom. yeah yes. she had knee surgery so I don't know she's a <laughs> yeah <laughs> Reverend Mayberry we will not forget 
and we thank you for those encouraging words. We thank all of you so much. God bless you, and we do have some light refreshments in the dining room, and please make sure. Oh, okay, okay. This gift basket is from the Black Hats Collective. Oh, I'll carry it for you. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, thank well, yeah, you. we'll help you. Tell them where the refresh the room is. Yes, it's in the dining hall right here. On the other side. On the other side of the church. It's right in there, and we still have um, water for you all as well. Thank you for all of you coming out. This is just awesome. This is just so touching. And we'll go ahead and pass the basket around for those of you who feel inclined to support us today. Thank you. And if you write a check, make it out to Pleasant Plain United Methodist Church. Yes. Even if you do Pleasant Plain UMC, that's good. UMC. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to have to get Papa, and we're going to have to go do dances down around. <laughs> yeah, it might happen. Actually, that might be kind of fun. Oh, is he still here? Oh, is he still here? Dr. Sasser. Dr. Sass, oh, is he gone, 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 gone? You know, you all have to help me because I'm not a good at the politics and things like that. But I do want, even though he had to leave, I want to thank Dr. Sasser for taking the time to come way out here in the country um, on this hot day, just like the rest of you. And I understand there was a meeting that took place with the seven buddies, the seven friends, um, the seven colleagues, <laughs> and the friendship seven, I'm sorry, okay. And Dr. Sasser was there. Uh, um, there were uh, some people who were not there who didn't bother to attend that meeting, but Dr. Sasser was there, and people put up a challenge to say, well, how many of you are gonna come out to the lynching memorial? So he was here, and we're thankful that he took the time to come out out and silly me I forgot I didn't you know <laughs> thanks <laughs> Me too.